Hi friends, it's been quite a while and um, I am happy to be back. Uh, I have uh, not been lazy, I've done quite a few instruments since last time and uh, I have discovered more helpful tools in this uh, method. Uh, I read in the comments that uh, some of you have some problems finding um, how to do and um, uh, I hope this is helpful for you. Um, I'm not saying that this is the way the old masters made it, but uh, it is striking how this method produces the same result uh, as what you want to do and uh, what most makers do when they just make visual copies of uh, the old instruments. So let's go to it. I uh, am working on a violin here and this is a, a very nice back. It's a bit uh, supposed to be about 100 years old and uh, I am uh, in the stage of uh, uh, taking it out now and uh, for you new to this channel I am not so fond of thickness uh, mapping like uh, you uh, say here it should be uh, 4.6 millimeters and here it should be 2.8 millimeters here it should be blah 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 I uh, am not focusing on numbers I know it's much easier if you just have to do it uh, certain millimeters here and there and there and then some filmmakers they flex the plate and say well this is a little bit uh, too stiff so I have to take a little bit more off and then they randomly take off some material I think that is uh, uh, not a good way to do it I think of uh, the plates having two archings. First you have the archings on the outside and it is supposed to sound the same uh, wherever you rub it like this. Uh, and I know I've told you that uh, there are two ways to uh, determine uh, how the arching behaves. The one, uh, first one is to uh, just rub it with the fingers like this uh, and uh, you hear where it um, sort of the noise uh, it has a pitch and where the pitch goes up you have to take away material and uh, doing so uh, this arching uh, comes forth and um, in my eyes uh, I mean, I only made about 440 instruments, so I don't, no, I'm still an amateur, but to me it looks very much like, um, like the old masters from Italy, Cremona, did it. And um, the strength of this method is that I am not visually copying something. Uh, I do my method and I end up in the same result as they did. Uh, and uh, what this method does is that it also takes uh, in uh, uh, regard uh, the material and the form. Uh, then uh, when I done the outside I make the inside with the same pitch. And this can be determined by rubbing or when I tap from the outside a little bit uh, harder, uh, it tells about the inside. And if I turn the plate, if I tap from the inside, it tells about the outside. And they are supposed to be the same. 
and you say well of course if you tap on the same spot it should be the same but uh, in this area I haven't uh, worked yet so let's see what happens if I tap here and here can you hear higher lower and as I said where it's higher tapping from outside tells about this side where it's higher higher lower it means take away here uh, so this is one way to do it and I know uh, some people have a different uh, difficulty to hear uh, what's higher and lower uh, my wife is one of them uh, she uh, after a while she hears the, oh yeah now I understand and then she gets it so I don't know what's in the way for hearing it right away but I discovered another way to make it perhaps more uh, audible uh, so if I make like this you can hear a pitch but when I use my index finger nail like here and scratch can you hear it's higher here than here so this gives a little bit more distinct sound uh, difference and you can sort of map the spots where you're uh, supposed to go and uh, take off material if I go it sounds the same but when I go out here here it's higher huh? and when we go around this spot you can sort of map this part in and you have to take away material there and as I explained before always start from the middle out because this is like um, the original spot and uh, this is a Guarneri model and uh, he has this funny plug in his uh, backs and uh, this spot I have also told you before uh, could be found uh, if you tap it very lightly uh, this doesn't tell about the outside because this is too uh, delicate tapping but if I go can you hear it's higher here and I go that way it's also higher here so there is a high spot here and that is where the hole should be and then of course why should there be a hole well if you listen to the scratch tone like this You can hear a difference in a different spot. So here it's higher. But this, in my eyes or <laughs> ears, uh, works as an amplifier. So I have this tool which I 
put here and drill all my, uh, I put my finger here and feel when it's supposed to go through the uh, plate it's not supposed to do that but uh, you can feel on the outside that uh, now I have to stop because mm, it's enough and if you do that and put it on a bench and now scratch with a nail well we can first repeat like this and then we do it with a nail can you hear that the character of the sound is much clearer uh, with the nail so it is one way to determine uh, where to take off material and it could be done without the hole just by scratching and uh, this is my explanation why Strad for instance didn't use the hole he was like a perfectionist so he, maybe he didn't want the hole there and uh, his hearing was perhaps so good that uh, he uh, didn't need it um, I don't know you have to uh, you have to explore it <laughs> but uh, this is a little bit about the method and scratching